Welcome to Medieval Madness, where we try and shed some light on the dark ages of human history. Because there are many fascinating things about the medieval times, aren't there? Life? Well, simply was different back then, not only technologically, I mean, try and imagine living without cat videos, duck face pictures, and Pokemon, but it was also different in the matter of social structures, the pursuit of professions, and of course, living conditions in general. Many differences can, for example, be seen between the mostly free population of cities and those who lived under the rule of a feudal lord in the country. But what was life in a medieval city like? Was it all about knights and kings, and was the common man but a mere tool of the nobles, as it is mostly portrayed in movies? Let's take a look. Side note, the contents of this video do not apply to every single medieval city, obviously. You won't be able to find two cities that share exactly the same characteristics, but it can be said that the features that are to be mentioned here could have generally been seen in many cities. We will focus on the average central European city in the High Middle Ages and the Late Middle Ages. Now, where and how cities developed had many different origins. So-called mother cities slowly developed over many hundreds of years, for example in the vicinity of a bishop's see. Other important landmarks, such as a castle or a monastery, could have caused a city to emerge in the surroundings as well. Whenever these landmarks were located near a river, ocean, or an already existing trade route, this increased the chances of urban development massively. Just think about playing Age of Empires or a comparable strategy game. You usually start your city close to the water, right? However, trade routes on land were rare during the early Middle Ages and in the beginnings of the High Middle Ages. In continental Europe, the only existing roads were leftovers from the Romans after all, and only in the following centuries a road system was developed. The reason for that? Well, it was mostly the trading between cities. Markets were the backbone of the medieval economy. They were of central importance for traveling merchants, artisans and the townspeople who bought cloth, tools and of course food, naturally. Markets were mostly located in the vicinity of a church, either on a square or in the form of a market street, and even for farmers living in the country, a city's market was the opportunity to sell grain, animals, and stuff like that. At least, well, that part of their belongings which they weren't forced to hand over to their feudal lord. Townspeople and rural inhabitants usually disapproved of one another. Rural inhabitants were dumb, and townspeople were just arrogant. At least, that's what they thought of each other. The pretended arrogance was mostly caused by better education possibilities in the cities. Of course it can't be compared to the public education system we have in industrial countries nowadays, but for trading it was very common for townspeople to have at least basic knowledge, like being able to read and do calculations, something that we take for granted nowadays. Most townspeople would be craftsmen like tailors, locksmiths and tanners, or they would be merchants and buy goods from the craftsmen to sell them on the markets for profit. What kind of profession would you choose if you had to? Just leave a comment and let us know- What? What was that? No. See, Sp Spencer, Spencer. Dragon Slayer is not a profe- No. Just- n This is not up for discussion. No, it's not- Fine. Fine. Be a Dragon Slayer. Do whatever, dude. Whatever. Okay. However, um, back to the serious stuff. Uh, walking around the streets of a medieval town would be very different to us than walking through a city nowadays. It kind of stinks that we can't simply go back in time and experience it ourselves, but what would stink even more is probably the city itself. Feces and waste were mostly thrown into the streets or the rivers, and most of the townspeople only owned one or maybe two pieces of clothing. Well, clothing which they rarely washed, so in the end they stank too. As a result of the bad, let's call it waste management, rats were a constant plague. To fight them it was not unusual for citizens to have several cats in the household, so you see, the internet's favorite animal was pretty popular back then too. But after all this I don't want to give you the impression that the townspeople approved of the stinking roads and bad general state of public space. In fact, they constantly complained about it to the city's council, but it remained a lasting problem in most cities. Hygiene was of course a different topic for children of wealthy merchants or of noblemen. Also, their chances to enjoy a higher education than the common folk were enormously higher. The main source of education was provided by the churches and monasteries in which it was possible to learn to read and write in Latin and have access to the church's libraries. 
Being rich sure made things easier. That doesn't seem to have changed. But it was not impossible for commoners to emerge and become wealthy too. However, being noble or wealthy merchant was extremely important in order to become a member of the city council. This council was a committee of townspeople who were elected in complicated procedures from among the townspeople. But, well, as it is still custom in politics today, it's easier to get in if you know the right people and have resources. The city council had many tasks, like granting permits, observing tax collections, and they also constantly tried to take steps to gain more independence from the king or the religious leaders, like for example an archbishop, who had a great influence on the city's politics. To gain more independence sometimes even meant throwing a bishop out of the city and waging war against the feudal lords or even the king himself. As you might imagine, well, some failed and others succeeded, and the outcome would change the city for the worse or the better. There's so much more interesting to tell about medieval cities, but this should be enough to summarize the most important facts of everyday life in a nutshell. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a question about the Middle Ages, then don't hesitate to leave a comment or visit my Facebook page and leave a message on my timeline.